Bob Kirkman, a real pleasure to have you with us on our Space Flight Now webcast and shuttle memories. Uh, I know you have a ton of them, but take us back to STS-1, uh, to my way of thinking, uh, as gutsy a test flight as ever was flown. This was a vehicle that was not tested unmanned, unlike all its predecessors in, in NASA's history. And there you were with a couple of million parts off in the low bidder, and you really weren't sure if the thing was going to go, or were you? Well, you know, we worked long and hard to get to this point where we could try to go uh, fly the shuttle. And we'd actually tried it on April the 10th and scrubbed you a, a software problem in the computers. I truly had thought at that time that uh, it was going to take a, maybe a week or so to resolve it, but we had some smart people that uh, resolved it in a couple of days. And so John and I went out there again on April the 12th and uh, climbed in Columbia. And... Uh, I truly thought we'd probably end up scrubbing again because it's a very complex vehicle and there were lots of things that had to go right. Um, and, in fact, I even dozed off a couple of times during the count. I was not not all that excited. But finally, the, uh, the count got inside one minute, and uh, that's when I uh, turned to John and I said, well, I think we might do it. Uh, and that's when my heart rate went up to about 130 and just was down nice, calm 90 or something like that. Truly, I'm surprised. <laughs> Surprise mine didn't go any faster. Uh, John said he, he wanted his to go faster, but he was too old. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, you know, people have asked me, uh, was I frightened or was I uh, scared at this particular point? And, uh, you know, it was just pure excitement going through me. I uh, I had worked a long time to, to get to this point, and a lot of other people had as well. And uh, to think that it was actually going to happen was uh, uh, really a... Uh, a fantastic idea. The uh, and you know the main engines lit off when they were supposed to six seconds prior to, uh, to lift off, and you could feel the vehicle shake a little bit. Uh, certainly could hear them uh, come up, and uh, they got down to zero, and boom, uh, the solid rockets lit off, and that's when you know you're headed someplace. Just hope it's in the right direction. Well, in in, in the back of your mind, yes, indeed, in the back of your mind, uh, did you think maybe it might not work? Um. Well, I, I guess I was very confident that John and I could get the vehicle back down on the ground safely. I didn't know whether we might have to do, uh, you know, a return to launch site to kind of aboard or aboard over to uh, Spain with our uh, transatlantic site at that particular juncture. And uh, But I, I felt very confident that we could get it back down on the ground. Uh, John and I had trained for just about every kind of emergency we could think of, had procedures on board to do so. We had a superb ground team and mission control. Uh, so I felt very confident I was going to get back down on the ground safe. And I guess you have to, uh, a test pilot thing, we can handle anything. So. Of course, yeah, on that flight and the first uh, handful, there were ejection seats. And I've, I've talked to John Young about this. The notion of punching out of the shuttle was not a pretty one, was it? No, uh, I think John and I both thought the ejection seats were primarily a placebo. Uh, certainly, if you punched out during an and you've seen the, the long firing tail that's coming out of the solid rockets and you would have you would have gone right through those so you would have been very crispy when you came out. The, the only way the ejection seats might have helped is that somehow on entry uh, we did, ended up not having enough energy for one reason or other to get to the uh, landing site that perhaps they could have helped out at that particular point. Uh, and just to, to put a, a button on it, how, how much of a thrill was that in the, in the, when you think about all the things you've done in your life, that first launch? I was like, I love those, but uh, the, uh, you know, I like to use the, people ask me what was the most exciting part, and John's answer was always the part between takeoff and landing, and that's what mine was as well. It, uh, it was one heck of a ride all, all the way going up to being in orbit, eight and a half minutes, uh, seemed to me like it went by in about 30 seconds, and then getting a chance to look at this great spaceship Earth that we live on, and uh, float around in zero G, and then bring it back down and land on a on the runway at the, out at Edwards Lake Bed, uh, that was uh, a moment that will always live in my memory. Bob Crippen, thanks for being with us. Our pleasure.